Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Norm, but this is another episode of This Old Mower. Today's old mower is this older Craftsman. It's got a Tecumseh engine on it. The guy just dropped it off to me. And it's Craftsman model 917-388-531. And uh, didn't really tell me a whole lot. I caught up with him later on and he says, uh, just needs a regular tune up and oh, by the way, I hit something. Ugh, I hate that. So this thing will start and run, but the handle's so sharp. It might have a sheared flywheel key because it yanked it right out of my hand and it makes an awful clattering when I do start it. Let me show you what it does. Really sounds bad. So we'll have a look under her skirt. Could be anything at this point, but we're gonna figure it out. Follow along. First things first though, is I'm gonna drain the oil out because when I turn the blade over, I don't want the oil going through the open ex exhaust valve and filling up and making a mess. Oh, it's a little dark looking. We'll let it run out for a little while. Well, yet another BP moment. Try to clean as much of this up as I can. Ooh, what a mess. Another little thing I like to do is if I know I'm not going to be getting to the oil right away, I like to put some painter's tape on the oil cap because this might be a day or two before I get around to changing this back out. So that will remind me right off the bat that, hey, this has no oil in it. Tips and tricks. Pull this spark plug out, make it a little easier to turn the blade. This is a uh, 21 millimeter spark plug socket it's a magnetic you can also use a 13 16 i prefer the magnetic ones and uh yeah there's a lot of oil on that telling me maybe the timing is off because it's burning so much because it got hit by something i'm gonna put a little clamp on the dead man handle because that will release the brake on the flywheel and the blade should turn freely which it does now, I really, there's no real divots in the blade, and it's not hitting anything, I don't think, as it goes around. But I'm going to put a laser on this and see if the crankshaft is bent. So I bought this little self-leveling -lev um, crosshair laser, and it takes a little machinations to get it level and set up, but... Uh, we're going to check out this crankshaft. So I got this guy set up on an old battery and about a quarter inch piece of styrofoam there. And as you can see, the crosshair is right in the center of that bolt. I'm going to rotate this blade around and see if that crosshair moves. And it does not. So I'm going to rule out the crankshaft being bent. But that rattling is very disturbing. All right, this is a 5 16 driver. Gonna remove these two screws on the front of this shroud and three more on the top. These are a different style of screw holding the tank on. Little, sh little shoulder screw. Have to wiggle the uh, tank off it has these little captive brackets i didn't have to remove the oil cap but uh now we get these other screws out this is a 3 8 not the 5 16 and see if we see anything oh i'm sorry there is one more All right. I sure don't see anything obvious in here. And I don't hear anything banging around as I turn that flywheel. 
So I'm thinking that maybe the sound I was hearing, because there's absolutely no tension on this, you see these little starter paws sort of stay out even when there's no tension on there. So I'm going to lubricate those. I am still going to take off the uh, flywheel to see if there's key that's messed up, but who knows? This might be the only problem right here because it sounded more like clattering, not something really bent or mechanical. So this might be the problem. This is simply some WD-40. I'm going to squirt that in there on both sides and see if that doesn't help those paws. Hmm. They still tend to stay a little stuck out there. Give that a little time to work in there. Now, if the guy had not told me that he hit something, I probably wouldn't be taking the flywheel off. But just to be sure, this is a uh, 19 millimeter socket. And let's get this off of here. There we go. That starter cup, washer, We'll see what's going on. I am done, gonna declare that that flywheel key does not look bent or out of place. So there's a little tab sticking out here and you can see on the witness marks on this starter cup that it should line up with those holes, which I assume are meant to uh, put in like on a Briggs and Stratton thread those holes. And I also noticed too, that this is a cupped washer. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's actually sort of curved in that direction. When you put a cupped washer on, you always want that in compression because that's going to help lock that down. All right, I have a nice little four by four. I'm going to shove in here to stop the blade from turning. That should do that. And according to the specs, it is 51 or 54 newton meters. I'm going to err on the side of caution and go for 54 newton meters. All right. There we go. You heard that click? 54 newton meters. have about 16 ounces of 10W30 pre-measured in this oil can. So we're going to pour that back in and fire this up and see what happens. Put a new spark plug in here. It's an RJF19LM. We're going to check the gap. Should be 0 0.030 inches. And that's what this is. It's a feeler gauge that I just pulled out. You can't read it anymore, but it's a 0 0.030 inches. And I think it's in good shape. Start the plug by hand once it seats onto the head. We're only going to turn this maybe a quarter of a turn. You don't want to go too far because you'll strip out the threads and all we're really trying to do is compress this crush washer just a little bit to make sure there's a good seal on there. This is the old plug. Check the inside. Clean. Push that back on until you hear a positive click. Here we go. Let's fire this up and see what happens. And as it happens, uh, my camera failed to... Uh, start. Actually, the battery died on it, but uh, I did start this up. It made a horrible clattering sound, uh, virtually the same as it was before. So I went all around. I put my hands on it, uh, trying to feel for any vibration anywhere. It wasn't on the top. It wasn't on the deck. It wasn't on the motor. It wasn't anywhere. So the only thing left is the blade.
So once I got up under here, I wanted to make sure that the blade adapter was not broken. It's a keyed part of the shaft. It came off easily. Neither one of these alignment pins were broken, but I think whatever the guy hit loosened that up just enough that the blade was rattling. But you can see it's on tight now. I torqued everything back up to spec and there is no noise now. And we're gonna check our oil level. See where that is. And well, I'll tell you, it's gonna be near about impossible to see because the oil is so clean. Just screw this all the way in. Uh, I don't expect you to see this, but I sure can. It is just above the add mark, and I'm going to add about four more ounces here. That's usually the difference what's on a dipstick between the high and low mark is about four ounces. And we'll check it again. Uh, once again, I know this is going to be impossible for you to see, but it is just right at the full mark. All right, this air filter looks mighty clogged up to me. Give it a little, about a quarter of a turn, and it can pop right out of there. And uh, you can't clean these, but it's probably too late for this guy. Yeah, it's seen better days. Make sure that's clean right there. Now when you go to put the new filter in, see where that tab is right there? That little tab right there has to go in that slot. We'll half turn, get that started. New air filter. This is not the original. You still can get them. So I'm going to line that tab, go in that slot right there. Get that breather tube out of my way, because it has to, there we go, has to, those slots have to line up there. It's a tight fit, and once you get all three slots in, give it that half turn, make sure it's all in there, make sure that breather tube, there we go. Now, you can still buy the original service parts. They're made in Mexico now, I think, and it's Tecumseh Part 35066. You'll be able to find that part any, any number of online retailers. The last time I saw this mower was several years ago, and it had water in the gas. So what I'm going to do is pinch off this fuel line just a little bit, and I'm just going to take off the bottom nut on the carburetor, this is a 13 millimeter or half inch. Get that bowl off of there. All right. See what's draining out of there? Doesn't look too bad. The fuel looks a little old, but it should be, it's running just fine. So I think with some fresh gas, this will be running great. So the bowl nut is also the main jet for this. And you see there's a pass-through right there. And I use just uh, really common tip cleaners for MIG welders. Make sure that's clear. You don't really want to enlarge it any, but find whichever size will fit well. Clear that out. If you don't have that, you could use any sort of soft wire, bread ties, whatever. And then... A lot of things, sometimes you miss this, easy to miss. Take the absolute smallest tip cleaner. And on one side, there's one more tiny hole that you have to make sure is clear right there. And that's the smallest tip cleaner. You could probably get away with a guitar string or something like that as well. So I think this... It's in good shape. No water in the carb. Looks good. Now, if you're lucky, you won't knock the bowl off and the gasket because they can be kind of ornery to get back on. Not too tight. And open up the fuel line. And you're going to feel for any leaks in there. And 
I think we're going to be all right. Now this is another carb bowl, and if you're not so lucky and this thing gets knocked off, you notice there's a little dip in here and a little divot right there. This does have to go on in a certain orientation. Uh, if you look at the carb, the hinge pin is going to be right there. So you want this to go on. Basically, if, if I'm looking straight at the mower, it's going to go on at about a little bit of a, you know, maybe about a 30 degree angle or so. And if you look closely inside these factory bowls, there's a little F. You, uh, you might not be able to see that, but that's F for front. So this goes on the mower, not at a perfect 90 degrees, but slightly turned. And this would be facing you when you put it on. So that's a good way to remember that. That little step portion in there is where the hinge pin is, where the float goes in and out. And I like to lube cables with a product called Triflow. The bicycle guys use it, so I trust those guys. Operated a few times. And it will work its way all the way down to the bottom. And the same thing on the other end. Just a few little squirts. A little bit of lube on the wheels and the adjusters. Just a couple of drops, not a lot. I went ahead and replaced that handle because it was in really bad shape. And let's give this a start. Lots of priming. that owns this dodged a bullet with hitting something there. No damage to the blade, the crankshaft, the blade adapter. He should have many more years uh, of good work with this motor, especially made in the USA. The deck is thick, it's heavy, much better than anything you can buy today. These are very easy to work on. You can still get parts, even though it's at the comps. I know a lot of people hate that, but hey, they're good machines when they're taken care of. If you want to see more about that little crosshair laser that I used, to check if that crankshaft was bent, watch this video right here. Mo happy.